This PowerPoint will focus on periodic functions and their properties, and notice the goal at the top to interpret and describe graphs that repeat at regular intervals. Now we're going to take a look at some examples, of one on this page. Um, the number of hours of daylight at for Hudson Bay, Nunavut are shown here for a number of different days over a period of uh, a couple of years. And so the day is in the top here, and the number of hours of daylight are in the bottom row. Now, if we plot those points, we will find that there is a smooth curve between them all. And so you see up to this point right here, all the points plotted, that's the 714 5.9 hours point. And the question here is, how many hours of daylight will it be on August 1st of the third year? Now we could add together uh, all the days in two years, uh, 365 and 365, and the number of days in uh, Ju uh, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then August 1st. Or, and we could actually do just August 1st of any year because it should be the same hours of daylight, but August 1st of the third year for this graph would be the uh, 943rd day. And so if we draw a line from the August 1st, 943 day up to here, and then across, we'll find that that's the number of hours of daylight there are on the, uh, there is on the 943rd day or August 1st of the third year. So there should be about 17 hours of daylight on August 1st. Flipping over to page two, there's some terminology here. Uh, first of all, uh, periodic function is defined. That's a function whose graph repeats at regular intervals. The y values in the table of values show a repetitive pattern when the x values change by the same amount or increment. Uh, period, the change in the independent variable, typically x, uh, correspond to one cycle. So for example, if we start the origin here, and that's one cycle. Now we don't have to start at the origin. Um, we could start at, for example, a trough and go to another trough, that's still one period. So it's a length horizontally on the x, usually x-axis, but whatever variables on the horizontal axis, that's the length of the period. The peak, this is a peak, a high point or a local maximum point in the graph. There's another one right there. A trough are the minimum points like here or over here. The equation of the axis is the equation of the horizontal line halfway between the maximum and minimum points. So for example, on this graph, the uh, equation of the axis is the x-axis. The amplitude is half the distance between a maximum point and a minimum point, or it's the distance from the equation of the axis to a peak, or the equation of the axis to a trough. In this example, and we'll, we'll continue some of it on the next page as well, we're uh, analyzing uh, a cutting blade's motion. And this is also a periodic uh, graph. The, uh, we're told here that Tanya's mother works in a factory and uh, that produces tape measures. And one day, uh, the mother takes uh, Tanya and her brother Norman to accompany their mother to work. And so during manufacturing, a metal strip is cut into six meter lengths and is coiled within a tape measure holder. A cutting machine chops the strips into the appropriate lengths. Uh, Tanya's mother shows a graph that models the motion of the cutting blade on the machine in terms of time. And so here's the graph. And we're asked, how can Norman interpret the graph and relate its characteristics to the manufacturing process? So this is certainly a periodic function. And the period is four seconds. So if we start right here and go along to that point, that's the end of a cycle. So that's four seconds. Now the next part describes what's actually happening with the blade. So the blade is stopped for three seconds and it's a, a half a centimeter above the cutting surface. And so then at, after the being stopped for three seconds, it takes a half a second to drop. And so when it's down here, it's actually cutting the metal strip. And after it's cut, it takes a half a second to rise again. And that's the end of the period. Uh, another question on the second page. Uh, farther down the assembly line, the metal strip is raised and then spooled or coiled into the rotating cylinder within the tape measure. Uh, Tanya notices that the height of the metal strip that attaches to the spool goes up and down as the rest of the strip is pulled into the cylinder or, or rolled around the spool. Tanya's mother shows him a graph that models the height 
of the end of the strip in terms of time. And so uh, it's, if it starts at the bottom here, it would cycle up to the top of the spool and back down again as, as one um, circumference of that spool is cycled on. And then, and then it happens over again. Another circumference around that spool is added on, etc. And we're asked how can Tanya interpret the graph and relate its characteristics to the manufacturing process. And so this is certainly a periodic function. There's one period right there. Now, the range is one centimeter to nine centimeters. So that's the range of the height. One centimeter is the lowest height, nine centimeters is the highest. So that's the range of this function. And so what that means is that the tape varies from one centimeter above the bottom of the, the container that the, measure, the measuring tape is spooled inside of to nine centimeters from the bottom. Now since the first trough is at zero and the second is at 0.25 seconds, the period would be 0.25 seconds. We don't have to start from a trough and go to a trough. We could go from peak to peak, but it's a little bit harder to, um, to see that it's exactly 0.25 seconds from here to here. We're asked to identify a function as being periodic or not. And if it's periodic, we're asked to uh, list several properties, the period, the equation, the axis, and the amplitude. And so this actually relates to the uh, example in the very first page. This is the number of hours of daylight over a three-year period for a place. And this motion certainly is periodic. If we start right here, there's the end of one full cycle. And of course, that is 365 days, so that's the length of the period. Now, the axis of symmetry the, sort of not axis symmetry, the axis would go right along here. And so it's y equals 12. Now, it's really easy to read y equals 12 from this graph. It's not always easy to see exactly what the number is. So what you can do is average. The axis is always the average of where a minimum is and a maximum, or a trough and a peak. And so that's why I'm adding 6 and 8 and dividing by 2. The average of those is going to give you the middle, which of course will be y equals 12. Now to find the amplitude, we measure the distance from the 12 up to 18, or 12 down to the 6, and of course uh, that's 6 hours. Now we could have also uh, taken 18 and 6 and subtract them, that would give us the total distance of 12 from here to here, and then divide it by 2, because remember amplitude is half the distance between a peak and a trough. So that's another way we could have gotten 12. Age. The motion of a piston on an automated assembly line is drawn here. And while it's not the same kind of periodic motion as, as was in the last graph, this is still periodic. If we start right here and move through to there, that's one full cycle. And then moving through again, that's another full cycle. So this mo motion is periodic. The period would be six seconds because the first one I cycled through right to there, that's at six seconds. So the period is six seconds long. The axis where we go through the uh, middle, again, it's y equals the average of where a trough is and where a peak is, which is at negative six and positive one. So negative six plus one would be negative five, divided by two is negative 2.5. So that's the axis. To find the amplitude, all we have to do is find the vertical distance between negative 6 and 1. And so I do that by taking the 1 at the peak and subtracting the negative 6 y coordinate at the trough. So the distance between those, of course, is 7. That's the total distance. The amplitude is half of that. That's why we divide by 2. So 7 divided by 2 gives us 3.5 centimeters. Okay, last example on the bottom. A student's moving a meter stick back and forth with progressively larger movements. And because they're progressively larger, that's why this is not a periodic motion. The same motion is not repeated over and over again. It may be similar, okay, but it's not the same motion because the if we were to call it the amplitude, the amplitude is getting larger. 
with progressively larger movements so that's why it's not the same motion repeated over time so it's not periodic motion so we don't have to list the period or the axis or the amplitude